Update. Would I be the a-hole if I took my son and his friends out for his birthday instead of my wife and stepdaughters? Original post. I, male 42, have three kids. A son, Isaac, who's 12, almost 13, with my ex who is no longer in the picture, and twin stepdaughters from my wife's previous relationship, Emma and Ava, seven females. Isaac's 13th birthday is coming up next week and he said that he wants to go to the movies and ask if he could bring two friends along. I agreed, and we planned a day out of fun, arcade, pizza, and a movie. These are all activities that I know that my son and his friends who are nerdy middle school boys would enjoy. When I told my wife about our plans, she suggested that we should have a family outing instead and proposed a local kiddie play place that my stepdaughters apparently love. I said that Isaac and his friends would be very disappointed and that he wouldn't have fun at a kiddie play place. She tried to convince me that Isaac could still have fun because there was an arcade there too, like two claw machines, a pinball, and a small DDR machine. She also said that since he sees his friends at school every day, family time should be prioritized over friends. I told her that it was unfair to force Isaac to spend his birthday at a kiddie play place instead of with his friends. And she accused me of favoritism and not loving my stepdaughters as much Isaac. This hit me pretty hard because I grew up with a stepfather who neglected me in favor of his own kids and I've been trying my hardest to be the father figure I never had. I've been spiraling down a rabbit hole of doubt about my own choices and for the sake of my own sanity, would I be the a-hole? Now for the top comments before reading the update. Say, I would never ask the girls to spend their birthday doing something Isaac wanted to do and you should show the same respect. Also, she's gaslighting the heck out of you and I'm betting it's not the first time. She accused me of favoritism and of not loving my stepdaughters as much Isaac. Opie needs to turn this logic around to expose the hypocrisy of his wife. Why are you letting the non-birthday children dictate where the birthday child gets to have his party? If this will be the new standard for the children going forward, then I hope you enjoy having Isaac decide where Emma and Ava will be celebrating their birthdays. Opie, please read the top comments. Your wife is manipulative AF. He is afraid that he is the neglectful stepfather, but he just fails to see that his wife actually is the neglectful stepmother. That if he keeps trying to not be the neglectful stepfather, he is going to become the neglectful father. I can only congratulate him on marrying his own stepfather. The cycle continues. You would not be the a-hole. Ironically, if you did go along with your wife's idea, you would be showing favoritism to your stepdaughters over your son. Stand your ground. Your wife is emotionally manipulating you. This is so true. Why should a 12 or 13 year old have to go to a kidded place for his birthday? Maybe she should stop showing favoritism to her daughters over OP's son. Such ridiculous logic. Not the a-hole. Let Isaac have his day that he picks for his birthday. You're showing favoritism by not making your son's birthday all about my children. Where does this woman get off? If a spouse treated my child like this, the door couldn't hit their behind fast enough. Not the a-hole. Now for the update. First of all, I just want to thank everyone who commented on my last post for opening my eyes. Folks said that there was more to my wife, who I will be calling Erica, than I knew. Y'all said I should talk to my son about what went on behind my back, and I did. And I regret not doing so earlier. Yesterday, my son had a day off school. Teacher prep day, I think, and I took the day off of work. After Erica left to go to her job and drive the girls to school, I sat my son down. And starting gently, I asked him about what Erica was like when I wasn't around. I work pretty late, so this was fairly often. At first, he was vague and hesitated to say anything bad about her. This set me on high alert, as it reminded me vividly of a similar conversation from my own childhood. And I assured him that he could be truthful with me. After some reassurance, he finally started talking about what she was really like. Here is a non-comprehensive list of things he told me about. He was not allowed to go to his friend's house down the street, which I normally as we've known the family for years. He was berated and yelled at for spending time alone in his room. He was berated and yelled at for not playing with the twins. He was made to watch the twins while Erica ran errands, where she was often gone for hours. He was told that I would be angry with him if he didn't obey her or spoke badly of her to me, which I again reassured him that I was not angry or upset with him. Needless to say, it was an emotional conversation. 
I'm feeling very guilty that this all happened under my nose. I'm blown away that the woman I thought was the love of my life could do that to my son. I married a woman who is just like my stepfather, and I don't know how to come to term with this. We went out to lunch to wind down and spend some more quality time together. When we got back, I had him pack a suitcase in case we had to leave. I also packed a suitcase. I was so furious with Erica, I never wanted to see her again. More importantly, I never wanted her in the same house as my son. Erica arrived home with the twins and was shocked to see me waiting for her at the table. I sent the twins to their rooms and my son was already standing by in his own and gestured for her to sit down and I confronted her about her treatment of my son. At first, she tried to say that he was making things up for attention, that he was jealous of the twins for getting some of my love. I shut her down and she then pivoted to the he's older so he needs to sacrifice for his younger sister's angle, which I also shut down. As a last ditch effort, she again accused me of not loving the twins. I got really angry at her then because as you all pointed out, she was using my childhood trauma to manipulate me. In the end, she admitted to favoring her daughters but said that it wasn't wrong because every mother has their own kid's best interest at heart and why would I care about a kid who isn't mine? My blood just ran ice cold. I texted my son to get his suitcase and get to the car and calmly told her that she could expect to be contacted by a divorce lawyer soon. I'm staying with my son in a hotel right now and looking at apartments, divorce lawyers, and child therapists in our area. I'm angry, I'm sad, but mostly I'm disappointed in myself for letting it go on for so long. I hope my son can forgive me one day, even though I'm sure I don't deserve it. I wish the best for your daughters, but screw you, Erica. I'd also go to family therapy with your son. You didn't knowingly put your son into this situation and would never have done so. You did the most important first step. You got him and you the heck out. Unfortunately, victims of abuse have a higher chance of dating or marrying an abuser. At the same time, people like your soon-to-be ex also intentionally mask their real behavior and motives. She most likely never loved you, just what you could do for her. You are calmer than I could be. I have wanted to choke her. Oh, trust me, I wanted to throttle her. But if I went to jail, my son would be left in her care. How long were you married? I'm hoping not long because I'm feeling so bad for you and your son. I hope nothing but the best for you guys. We were living together for three years, married for two and a half. I'm not entirely sure how long her mistreatment of my son was going on, but from the way he talked about it, it's been for a while. My heart breaks for all the late nights at work, when I trusted that Erica was looking after the kids, but she was actually abusing my son, or had left the kids all alone. Maybe if I would have been home more often, I would have caught something earlier. I suppose I shouldn't dwell on the past too much. It's not healthy. Thank you for the kind words. Opie, I'm sorry this had to end this way, but at least you listened to your son and took action for him. I begged my mom to leave my awful stepfather and she never did. He left her after discovering an affair she was having. I did the same. I showed her new bruise every day, but she always dismissed me. What did you do to deserve it? Was her favorite saying. Solidarity, my friend. Internet hugs to you if you want them. Wow, it's amazing that how, as a mother, she's allowed to have her own kid's best interest at heart and not care about a kid who isn't hers. But you, as a father, aren't allowed to have your own kid's best interest at heart while caring more about kids that aren't yours to not show favoritism. Pot meat kettle. It was like she went above and beyond to deprive your son of any happiness and relationships outside of the home slash family and not for the sake of a family bonding. Aside from parentification slash babysitting, she was isolating him in a way that you would normally attribute with abusive adult relationships. Very sociopathic in nature. She was keeping him under close surveillance or a prisoner in his own home. I'm very glad that you realized that something was off and reached out for unbiased opinions when you felt you were being manipulated. You trusted your gut and your son will thank you for it in due time. I don't think you have to worry about receiving forgiveness from him because you have always been standing up for him whenever she tried to interfere with his plans. Both the camping trip and birthday celebration comes to mind. And you did spring into action to escape her clutches versus ignoring the problem like most parents do. I doubt that an awful narcissist like Erica will admit to it, but by not trying to be a good mom to your son, she caused her daughters a great dad. Last story. 
Am I the a-hole for telling my wife's friends to buzz off when he said I was taking advantage of her? Original post. I, male 25, and my wife, female 24, have been together for six and a half years. About three months ago, I lost my job. This was sudden, but not at all unexpected. When I got home with the news, my wife and I sat down to have a serious conversation. The gist of it was that I would keep to our original plan of paying 50% of rent and bills, but that she would take over most of the other household expenses. This includes groceries and other related necessities such as pet food. A few weeks after this conversation, we had another to redistribute chores. This was more for me than for her. Things weren't getting done when I wanted them done, and she was having a hard time maintaining her half of the chores. She said she was too overwhelmed with her new job and the chores, and she was falling short, and was sorry. I said that I would take on everything, and the only thing she had to take care of were the litter boxes, cause I just hate cleaning litter boxes. In exchange, she offered to pay for everything, and the only bill I would be responsible for would be 50% of rent. We both walked away happy, and this has been our arrangement since. A week or so ago, we went over to a friend's recently purchased house to hang out and check the place out. It was going well, but then her friend said something snarky about how I would have so much free time to fix stuff since I'm unemployed. I thought he was asking for help and replied that I wouldn't mind, he'd just have to give me a heads up. He asked why, since it's not like I'm doing anything. I reminded him we have a 5-month-old puppy that needs minding, a house that needs cleaning, and meals that need cooking. He huffed and called me a freeloader, saying that he knew my wife was paying for just about everything for us. It seemed so out of the blue to even mention. I said she might be buying the groceries, but I'm the one cooking them. That she might be paying for the lights, but I'm the one cleaning them. I've worked really hard to make sure no one gets to call me a bum, and my wife has deeply appreciated all of that effort. So much so, that I know she talks to her friends about her homemade lunches and snacks and cookies. I told him I knew he was jealous that his girlfriend didn't talk about him the same way, and if he was so pressed and making me look like a worthless freeloader, he might want to remember who put the 50k down payment on their house, because I knew it wasn't him. I left with my wife shortly after, and she said I took it too far. At a time, I had felt like I had been matching his energy, but thinking about it now, I don't know. Was I the a-hole? Added to add, for those wondering why my wife was still doing her share of chores originally, it's because whilst she was unemployed, I still did my half. She didn't want to ask I do what she didn't. It was only after that week where I noticed she was struggling that we sat down for the second convo, where I offered to take it all. My wife and this guy's girlfriend have been friends for literally a decade. I've never minded that she tells her best friend everything about us because her friend does it too. Thus, how I knew about the down payment on the house. No one's talking about anyone behind backs. To answer a common question, am I currently looking for work? Yes and no. I'm trying to start my own handyman business. And although things have been going okay, I'm not making a million. So far, it has been just enough to get by. And that's fine with my wife and I, because this train for 50 to 60 hours weeks was almost too much for us. Since I've gone part-time, we have been better than ever. So really, I'm a part-time house spouse. I have been turning in applications as a backup plan, in case anything happens and I need to start making real money quickly. What was my wife doing during this or did she say anything? This was a quick look over of the house. We weren't planning to be there for very long. After the guy and I exchanged words, my wife snorted a bit of a laugh and we moved on. Since this happened though, the guy has not been responding to any texts from my wife which is why she said I may have taken it too far. I thought I was matching his energy, but thought I'd bring it here just to see what a third party thought. Now for the comments before reading the update. Not the a-hole. How you and your wife split your responsibilities are your business and no one else's. Exactly. Not the a-hole at all, OP. He messed around and found out and got put in his place. What he refuses to realize is that you're a real man that doesn't mind helping your spouse with the housework, the cooking, the cleaning, and so forth. Real men who are not ego-driven for points from ordinary society, they show by their actions backing up by their words. And I can tell you that your wife appreciates and loves that about you. At this point, I don't think he is helping his wife with the housework. He's doing his part in the household and sounds like he's good at it.
not the a-hole. Your wife's friend is a sexist dum-dum. And I wouldn't be surprised if he holds the hots for your wife and is trying to drive a wedge between you and her. He's jealous his girlfriend doesn't act the same way Opie's wife does. Is where I was like, yup, dude has a crush on Opie's wife. The friend is doing the macho tough guy jerk thing because he has got the hots for the wife. The wife might want to figure her stuff out too. Now for the update. I spoke with my wife because a few people seemed concerned that my wife might be holding some resentment and that was why her friend had reacted in such a way. So I asked to sit down after dinner and chat about what happened and told her about this post. She said that she wasn't resentful at all, but that her longtime friend had been sharing all of the things I've been doing and it has caused some issues in their relationship. Example, my wife's longtime friend asked if for her birthday they could try to make a simple meal together. Neither of them can really cook, but she thought it'd be a fun little couple thing for her birthday. He replied saying I don't know how, and when she said she knew that she just wanted to try, and he said no. No other solutions, no other options, just shut her down. When her friend told my wife this, my wife went off about how he was being a crappy partner, and Opie would never. This was about a month ago. I had not been aware of that interaction until now. My wife suspects they had a long conversation afterwards and that the guy resents me for causing some kind of rift in the relationship, which explains why he lashed out out of the blue like that. She said that's also why she thought I had gone too far, because he was already in an emotional state and I had done nothing but make it worse. She agreed that he deserved a clap back, but thought I could have been the bigger person. I double-checked that she was okay with how we were doing and she said she was happier than ever because I'm around almost all the time and she never gets a chance to miss me and that was that. As for the guy her best friend is dating, I don't know. He seems like an okay dude but the more I hear about him from my wife, the more it ticks me off and I worry for her friend. I've already had to have one come to Jesus talk with him after he yelled at his girlfriend so badly that she called my wife in tears. I drove across town at 2 a.m. to tell him to get his act together or leave. He promised to go to therapy after her, but I haven't heard anything about that. I want to tell her to leave him, but situations like this are never that easy. 